So congratulations, Wesley. Another round is through. How was your match? Tell us about the key moments and uh, how was how was it difficult to win today's game? Well, it's a, it was a very tough match. Um, Vladimir Fedosev is an up-and-coming player and he's improved by leaps and bounds over the last few months. And so I drew yesterday with my black game and today he played the same opening, which was the Petrov defense. And uh, he prepared really deeply. At some point, I think around move 20, he still hasn't used any of his time. In fact, he's gained seven minutes from the increments. So it's clear he was very well prepared. And I thought we'd make a few more moves and then agree to a draw. Because uh, if he plays like rook f7, e7, and trades the rooks and the major pieces, then there's not much to play for. Um, but then I was finding little ways to keep up the pressure and just try to keep the game going. And then he kind of weakened his king side position by playing move g7, g5, which was really surprising. Um, but perhaps he's not that bad yet. But he made after he made a further mistake, bishop d8 to e7, which allowed h4. And he has to take, so he got this double h-pawns. Then it was... Uh, a di quite a difficult game for him. At least I can keep the game going and the pressure going. And uh, since he was so much ahead of time, I decided to avoid complications and just trade queens and aim for a better end game. And we, I found this idea before, and then I won one pawn back. And then the end game was very nice because I was basically a pawn up with his doubled h pawns, which can fall uh, anytime, and uh, so on and so forth. And he defended really well. But I think he missed that after the trade of rooks. The bishop endgame is very difficult to defend with black. And maybe in the end, it's uh, lost. So he didn't have a chance to save that endgame, and you saw it in advance? Well, I think the bishop, when the rooks are traded, it's very difficult to, to hold it. Um, one, because I had three minutes left, and I was worried that we would get into a triple repetition, so that's why I decided to go for the bishop ending. Um, and as he was thinking, I saw this idea, bishop a3, c1, d2, e1, just to control the h4 square and prevent any counterplay. And he has to put the king on e6 and wait, you know, put the king on e6 to control the e5 square. Um, and try to hold the fortress. But I think it's still very difficult for black and he probably needs, most likely needs a miracle to to save that end game. So yeah, he should have avoided, but it's very hard to see, especially this maneuver, bishop a3 to c1 and to e1. It's very hard to foresee in advance. So perhaps he should have exchanged the bishops instead of the rooks. So he should have went bishop g5 at some point and just hope that the rook endgame is a draw because they say he probably lose his a5 and maybe his d5 pawn, but then he'd get some activity with his king and rook can come on the second rank. And as everyone knows, the rook endgame has very large drawing tendencies. So maybe he should have uh, uh, aimed aim for that. So your next opponent is uh, Jinkleren, and he actually said that uh, with you he has a uh, kind of equal score, while with Fedosev he, he is worse in in the score. But uh, of course uh, he he did not know who will who will go through, and it was unclear if if you are winning or not. But what about you? Uh, how do you look forward to this match? Well. I, uh, you know, it's going to be a very interesting match. I think here in the World Cup, as players go into every round, the match just gets tougher and the opponents get uh, tougher. And, and no one wants to go home here, so we'll definitely try our best. I played a match with him a year ago in Shanghai, China, and I lost that match with three draws and one loss. But obviously, a lot of time has passed since then. Um, well, he's a very experienced player. He's a very good player. You know, he's China's number one, and you don't become number one China unless you're unless you're very good because they play a lot of uh, lower-rated players. 
in the Chinese league and the Chinese championship. And to be able to maintain such a high rating is very impressive from, from Ding Liren. Um, right now, I'm just very glad that we have a couple of rest days. Everyone here is uh, very tired. There's a lot of nervous tension and stress because no one really wants to go home. And uh, I, in fact, I'm uh, quite sad for Fedosev. You know, he's a great player. Um, and, you know, no one wants to go home. But at the end of the day, someone's got to win. And still, it's a great learning experience to be here in the World Cup. I think this is my fifth time here. And it's the, the farthest I've gone to so far. And uh, we, my mother and I really love Georgia uh, countries, our first time here. And uh, everything is very oh, well managed for the most part. Um, because, the, for example, the venue is in the same hotel and also we don't have to go out. Everything is just in the same hotel. So we, we don't really have time to make a touristic view of the country. But we have uh, goals and missions to accomplish in this tournament. So uh, right now we're very focused. And uh, the next two days we'll just rest and try to get my old energy back. Uh, actually, uh, Livon uh, was surprised that there are two rest days. He did not know that uh, there is one more extra official rest day, and the organizers are planning some excursions. Uh. But you came in advance, uh, like a week before, so you saw a lot of Georgia already. But uh, are you planning to go again? And how how did you like Georgia when you were staying in the center? Well, it's very nice. It's very good. I, I don't think we'll, we'll join the excursion because there are games to be played. We usually do the tours after the tournament's over. Um, but yeah, we came a week in advance before the tournament started to get over the jet lag. There's a nine hour time difference between Minnesota and Tbilisi. And uh, as, uh, as I get older, I uh, I realize how serious jet lag problem can be. And generally you need, as a rule, one day for every one hour of time uh, difference. Um, well. Basically, we didn't take a tour of the country, but uh, we've met a lot of people, and uh, we've been to the city center, and we've tasted all the different Georgian local cuisines here. And uh, we, li we like it very much. Before, before coming to each different country, we, we tend to research on the best things to do and the best places to eat. And uh, so we, we, we've tried them all. Right. So what's your favorite uh, dish of Georgia? Uh, what's that thing called? Oh, well, they got King Kali is the other one. And the other one? Kachapuri. Kachapuri. Oh, yeah, Kachapuri. So they have like four different kinds of Kachapuri. And uh, I think my favorite is Hajaruli. Uh, I forgot the name. And Julie, yeah, that one, the one with egg in the middle. Ajari. Ajari, yeah. <laughs> it's also my favorite. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I think I can eat Georgian food for for uh, uh, regularly. I mean, we, it's uh, it's very different from the food that we usually eat, and uh, I like Georgian food because it's. Uh, it's uh, very natural, it's very organic. You know, they don't put that much oil and spices on it. It's all like mostly handmade. So now, now, it, now it seems like you can give up on the idea of going to Isle of Man finally. Uh, do you regret it? And uh, what do you think about the, this year's uh, list of participants? Oh, well, the Isle of Man list this year is really impressive. It's almost like a world championship, you know, world championship open. Every every single player is there, except for the players here in the World Cup. Um, well, I don't think that's ever happened before that, you know, world champion and most of the top 10 players or top 20 players are there. So the Isle of Man this year is definitely the strongest open tournament ever. And... Uh, I, be, I was there last year, and it was uh, very well managed, very well run, and we love the place. I mean, we just uh, 
fell in love with the country life in the Isle of Man. And, um, well, I have no regrets not to go there this year because, uh, huh, uh, first, first of all, playing chess is and preparing before each game and also the nervous tension and the stress can take a toll on a chess players. You know, we're also human and we, we get tired. We're not computers. And also traveling from one place to another in different time zones takes a lot of energy too. And I think if I have less than a week um, in between each tournament, I think that's way too much for me. Generally, I need two or three weeks of, of rest and play. I can't just play, play, play and have a 2800 rating performance. So I think I'm, I'm glad to skip it this year. But it's unfortunate because Isle of Man is our, one of our favorite tournaments in the, in the chess calendar. But unfortunately, they couldn't move the dates to not, to not coincide with the World Cup. They tried, but I think uh, Alan Ornsby, the organizer, couldn't, couldn't, uh, uh, couldn't rent the, the venue uh, for a different date. Um, sorry? Ah, so next year, yeah. Yeah, but are you going to follow the games of Isle of Man? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll, 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 uh, I'll follow. You know, they're, it's also very dangerous for, you know, a top, a, a top player or well, anybody. Well, I think when you play in an open tournament for a top player, you either gain rating or you lose a lot of rating points because there are a lot of uh, hungry young players who are very well prepared. And it's very difficult to win. For example, you're playing a 2,500 or a well-prepared 2,400 player, and you have to win with the black pieces. That's very, very difficult. Also, if you draw against a low-rated player, then you lose like four points. And if you win, you gain one point. And if you somehow lost against them, you lose nine points. So basically, if you lose one game, then you have to win the rest of the the rest of your your games in order not and it still can be not enough yeah actually in, in the world cup uh, magnus and levon are still the only two players who stayed uh, above 2800 ah. so do you think that uh, they they can uh, uh, that magnus can maintain it in isle of man and how much actually do you care about the rating um well first of all rating goes up and down. You know, rating changes by the day per game these days. You know, you can be 2750 and then win like, uh, and have a really good tournament and become close to 2800. Um, I think for the most part, I personally, I don't really care that much about rating because it, uh, it the the play matter matters much more if I, if I play good chess, I can gain rating. Um, but if I focus too much on it and forget other aspects, then I could easily lose. For example, I have one bad tournament in the Singfield Cup, and I lost like 18 points. Suddenly, it went from number two to like num almost number 10 in the world. So it, it you know, it doesn't really matter uh, that much to me. I think uh, it only matters. I think for me, rating is only. To, for example, qualify for the candidates or the grand chest, or but other than that, I don't really care that much about. It. I prefer to win a major tournament than focus on my rating. But anyway, I think uh, Carlsen will do well in Isle of Man personally because obviously he wants revenge from getting knocked out early here in the World Cup, and uh, I'm not sure if Booth Young is playing there. But if he is, then he, he better be careful. <laughs> I mean, boom. <laughs> um, I think that's the reason why Magnus played in the Isle of Man, because he clearly wants revenge. And I think like 75% of the players in Isle of Man are, are coming here from the World Cup. So everyone is hungry and everyone wants to do better. Um, but it also depends on the form of a of a player. Uh, 
you, you know, yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very hard to say who's going to win that tournament actually, because anybody can win it. You know, Kramnik, Magnus, Fabiano, know, maybe Hiker, and also Pavel Elianov. You know, he's a de defending champion, and you know, he can have really good tournaments. So it's going to be a very exciting tournament. But I'm glad not to participate there this year because I'm already very tired from this World Cup. And to go there with just a, I don't know, a couple of days rest is, is very difficult. Not even a couple. Ah. <laughs> if, you, if you play the semi final, then, yeah, then yeah it's not enough. Day. But uh, okay, well, we'd wish you to have enough rest during these two rest days and good luck in the tournament. Thank you. Thank you.